Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Cavadas. I'm on the parish council here at St. Constantine Helen in Maryville, Indiana. And um, we are making some instructional or reenactment videos on how uh, protocols and rules are going to change when the church is uh, finally reopened. And um, we felt it would be nice to see a visual on uh, how things are going to work. So um, this first video is just basically a summary of how all the various stations, that's what we're calling them, uh, different areas of the church, how we're going to do things um, from a protocol and rules perspective. And then we'll make shorter segments on just each station so that you know exactly what's going to happen. So um, to start off, the first um, portion that we want to talk about is when you enter the church or the exonarthex, which is the area before you get to the formal narthex. Um, so I have a graphic that's overlaying that will be when we do a segment, um, that's how each segment will start with a specific uh, description of what we're doing. So um, the first thing you're going to do when you come to church is uh, when you exit your vehicle, you're going to put your mask on. The church is not going to be supplying any masks, so we ask that you bring your own. Um, any mask will do as long as it covers your, your mouth and your nose. And that is not only for your safety, but also for the safety of others. Um, and all these rules and protocols that we're going to be going over on this video are directives um, from the metropolis and also um, state and local government guidelines and also the CDC. So when you come into the church, you will not be coming into the, the doors in the front of the church. Uh, the doors that we're going to ask people to come in are the side front doors or the doors that are right by the bell tower. Um, those will be the doors that people will be entering and when you enter those doors you're going to be coming to a station where you have to provide your name and how many people are in your reservation that you made. Um, if the door is not open wait for a parish council member to open it for you. We will have a parish council member uh, stationed at that door that keep the door open. Um, however, on days that we're, it may be raining, we will have the doors closed, but a parish council member will open it as he sees people approach. There's also blue tape outside on the sidewalks. Um, if there's a lot of people, we ask that you stand at a blue tape marking. So when you're approaching a church, just stay one blue line behind the people in front of you. Um, and they're all around the church on both sides and all the way to the front by the Great Hall. So there's plenty of blue lines to keep everybody uh, socially distanced. They're a minimum of six feet apart. Most of them are like eight to ten feet apart. When you come into the exonarthex, you're going to come to a check-in desk. At that check-in desk, there's going to be a council member that's going to um, ask you some questions and take your temperature. So and they're also going to ask your name and how many people are in your party. So as the fathers explained, Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., you're going to have to make a reservation to attend church for the next service. And you're going to have to state your name and how many people will be in your party. So let's say it's Nick Cavada's party of two. When I approach the desk, I'm going to say Nick Cavada's party of two. We will have a sheet where we'll have from the office that says who made reservations and how many people are in their party. The name and the number and the people in the party have to match exactly. You can't say two on the reservation and come to church with four. Two people will not be allowed in the church. Um, part of the reasons for the names and the check-in, not only to make sure that people that made reservations are allowed in, but for contact tracing in case somebody does contract the, uh, the virus we can contact the people that came to church that day. Um, the parish council member at the check-in desk is going to ask you four questions, and those questions are the following. Um, sorry. The first question is going to be, has anyone in your household been in contact with anyone that has been diagnosed or being monitored by the CDC for COVID-19 in the last 14 days? The second question is going to be, has anyone in your household traveled out of the country in the last 14 days? The third question is going to be, is anyone in your household currently experiencing any of the following symptoms? 
fevers greater than 100.4 Fahrenheit, any severe headaches, any diarrhea, vomiting, or abdominal pain. And then also if, there, if you have any symptoms of shortness of breath or coughing. And the final question is basically going to be, please confirm with a verbal yes that you have answered these questions, including this one, to the best of, the knowledge at, best of your knowledge at that time. And that's it. Um, we will also have somebody who can speak Greek that can ask those questions in Greek. After the uh, questions are answered, and if you have sufficiently answered all of them, if you said no to any of those, we would have to ask you to uh, basically go back home and leave the church. Um, we will also take your temperature with a temperature gun. It's non-contact. Um, it's just, you've probably seen those in other places. And as long as you don't have a temperature of greater of 100.4, you're fine to enter the church. Um, and then once you're done uh, answering those questions, you have completed what we call the first station of entering the church or exonarthex. There will be hand sanitizer at that station. So once you're finished, we ask that you hand sanitize your hands before you go into the narthex. And then the narthex portion is going to be our second segment. And I'm going to put a graphic here to let you know how it's going to look when we do the video. So when you enter the narthex, um, we will be operating both candle stands on each side. Um, there are blue X's where people can stand. They are a minimum of six feet apart. Most of them are eight to ten feet apart. Um, we ask that you stand at or on that X as uh, close as possible. So when you come into the narthex, this is where all the candles are going to be handled. So you will not be able to uh, reach for your own candles. The white narthex ones that you light and you put in the sandbox will be handed to you. So you're going to have to tell the parish council member how many white candles you want, and they will hand them to you directly. Also. There will be no paper bulletins or any paper whatsoever on the uh, stand, so there will be not like a normal Sunday where you know you grab a bulletin. Uh, those will not exist. Uh, the bulletins are electronically sent uh, via email, and uh, normally on Friday or Saturday. If you have a mobile phone, a smartphone, you'll be able to uh, you know follow along with the memorials, for example, or read the bulletins um, uh, via your mobile, or you can print it at home um, and bring it with you. Um, if you purchase red votive candles or white votive candles, the white votive ones are the circular white ones that we put behind the choir in the corner. Um, and the red ones, of course, go behind me here in front of the Anastasio. Those candles um, will be lit and taken by the parish council. Uh, parishioners will not be allowed to take the red votives or the white votives uh, to their place. So you will just basically say, I want, for example, two red votives. State which icon you would want them placed in front of, like uh, Christ or Panagia. And the council member will light them and then uh, bring them and, and place them uh, by those icons. And same thing if you ask for the white votives, they'll ask you how many you want. If you say four, great. Um, they'll go and place the four over there and light them at that time. We ask that... Um, when you do come to church that you have exact change if possible. So the white narthex candles that you put in the candle box are $2. The white votives that go in the corner behind the choir are $2. And the red votives are $10. So that gives you an idea uh, every Sunday before you come to church how much money you will need um, to uh, purchase those candles. We will also have credit card machines. So um, Actually, we prefer, if you can, to use your credit card because um, we're trying to limit the amount of exchange of money. As you know, money can be some of the most uh, germs that you'll find because it's exchanging all over the place. But, so, but if you don't have a credit card, we ask for exact change. We're trying to limit the amount of uh, money going back and forth. Um, after you receive your candles, we ask that you re-sanitize your hands, and there will be hand sanitizer at the candle stand. When you place your candles in the sandbox um, by the icons in the narthex, we ask that you at least keep it one hand distance away from the other candle. 
we're trying to limit uh, people touching other candles that other people have touched. So just put a candle somewhere further away from the next uh, adjacent candle. Um, and then when you go in front of the icon, you, uh, we ask that you do not kiss or touch the icon. You can do your cross and venerate. Um, and same thing when you go to the center of the narthex where we have the, uh, the center icons, we ask that you do not kiss or touch those as well. Um, you can do your cross and, uh, and venerate. Um, at all times, um, like I said, there will be blue X's in the narthex. We ask that you stand on them or very near them because they are at a minimum of six feet apart and that keeps the social distancing. When you're finished lighting the candles, you will go to an X spot um, at the point between the narthex and the nave or the church. And we ask that you stand there and wait for the parish council member to usher you to your seat. So that takes us to our next segment, which is entering the nave. And let me put a graphic up for that. So when you get into the nave, um, there will be two X's um, on both uh, sides of the door and a parish council member will be standing there waiting to uh, escort you to your, um, your seat. Once you enter the nave, um, a parish council member is going to seat you at a pew. The, the pews have been ribboned off, so every other pew people will not be allowed to be seated, and um, they have ribbons, so you can't even walk in between them. Um, and each section, we have what, one, two, three, four, we have six sections in the church. Each section is alternated, so no two rows of people will be sitting um, uh, next to each other. And um, the pews also have a dot, a colored dot. The, the color is no significance, it's just that's the colors I had at the time when I pl place them. Each dot is a minimum of six feet apart. Um, most of them are eight, eight feet apart. But uh, for example, the first row of pews, there's only two dots. So only two people can sit in that pew, with one exception. Every dot, um, every person is allowed to sit at a dot. The dot will be in front of you. In other words, when you sit down and you don't see a dot in front of you, you cannot sit there. The exception is for families that live in the same household. So let's say you're a family of four, you live in the same house. You will be able to sit together in that pew no matter if there's a dot there or not. However, the next adjacent dot may not be able to be used because now with more people sitting at one dot, um, there's the social distancing of six feet no longer exists. So depending on how large that family is, um, it may be be very possible that one family will have a pew to themselves. It all depends on the numbers and um, if everybody is six feet apart. All books, material have been removed from the pews, so there will be nothing in your pews. That also means that um, if you want to follow along with the day's readings, the gospel readings, the, the epistle readings, um, the best thing to have is probably the uh, Greek Orthodox Archdiocese app where they have all the readings on, um, on an app when you can follow along. Um, we ask that you do not place any tissues or any other trash in the pews, uh, the places where the books are normally at. So the rule of thumb is whatever comes with you must leave with you. So please, uh, you know, if you have a, a mint or something like that and a candy wrapper, uh, we ask that you do not place them in the pews. Uh, put them in your pocket and take them home and put them in the trash. When you're in the church, of course, from beginning to end, we ask that you have masks on at all times. And um, that is for the protection of yourself and everybody else. Um, we will ask the younger parishioners that made reservations for that day if they would like to volunteer to sit in the balcony. Um, uh, for obvious reasons, there's a lot of steps to get to the balcony. Um, but in my opinion, it's the best kept secret of the church. It's the greatest uh, view. It's, it's beautiful sitting in the, in the um, balcony. The balcony f will fit about 22 people, um, if I remember correctly. So that's the maximum number we can put on the balcony. And we're, the balcony has three rows, if you haven't gone up there in a while. Um, and they're tiered, so the, the back row is higher than the first row. Um, so the middle row will not be used, the first and the last row. 
So the first row in the balcony does not have a pew in front of you, so you won't see a, a dot, but the dot does exist. It's actually on the wall, the little wall of the balcony. You'll see a dot, and that's where you'll know you'll be seated. And of course, a parish council member will escort you to those seats. So at this point, um, you're basically in church, uh, and service has started. And uh, the next segment, um, would, we won't have a video on this, but this is what I call during church service, some of the rules. So if you need to use the restroom, we will only have one restroom open. It will be the one in the cry room. The one in the bride's room will not be used. Um, so if you, if you need to go to the restroom, we ask that if you can, use the restroom before church, um, before you come to church, or before you get seated. If there is somebody in the restroom, we're going to ask that you sit um, in the front row of the cry room pews. There's two rows uh, in the cry room uh, with pews. We ask that you sit in the first one, and only two people can sit in there to be socially distant. Um, and then when the person exits the cry room, or exits the bathroom in the cry room, you have to wait for a parish council member to disinfect the, uh, the bathroom before you can go in. So you're gonna to have to have some patience. It's gonna take a few minutes. We're gonna disinfect the toilet, the, um, the knobs of the, the sink, and the handles of the door. Um, and then at that point, you can enter. And, um, and that should be it for that. Um, and then after you exit the cry room, you, we ask that you re-sanitize your hands with the hand sanitizer that's in the narthex before you go back to your seat. Um, some other things uh, during church that normally happen, after orthros, uh, usually the priest brings the Bible. There will be no kissing of the Bible. Uh, the priest will take the Bible directly to the narthex, um, so people will not get up, kiss the Bible like you normally do. During the great entrance, when fathers uh, go around the church and come up the center aisle, many people that sit on the aisles like to grab or rub the vestments of the priest. We ask that you do not do that. Uh, we're trying to minimize contact as much as possible for your safety and the safety of our priests. During church service, there will be no choir. So the choir section of the church has been totally roped off except for the last uh, two, of the, two of the last three rows. Um, because to be perfectly honest with you, there's not a very good view from back there, so we didn't feel to uh, use the rows for people to sit. We will use the other corner that's by the pulpit. Um, for people to sit because you do have a, a pretty decent view um, from there. So that's pretty much it for that segment, uh, what we call during church service. The next one is probably the one that's most different, and that's what we're going to call going for uh, receiving Holy Communion and exiting the church. So let me enter the graphic for that. So receiving Holy Communion is going to be different than it is normally. It's going to be done at the end of Divine Liturgy. It's not going to be kind of like in the middle or towards the end. Um, the, the priests are going to finish. I'm going to get rid of the graphic real quick. The priests are going to finish the service, including the memorials. And then at that point, um, the parish council will be uh, dismissing everyone to get Holy Communion. And then once you get Holy Communion, you will exit out of the church. So the way we plan to do this is that um, we're going to start from the corners of the church and work our way in, starting from the front pews going towards the back of each section. And the reason for that is, is that when we exit the church, we will be exiting out the side doors. There's a north side door, which faces the house, or like towards Gary. And then there's the south side doors, that exit towards the, the hall and the offices or Crown Point, for example. So everybody's seated, seated on the south side of the church, which is the, the side of the church that um, is near the, the hall and the offices, will be exiting off, out of the south side doors. Everybody seated on the north side of the church will be exiting the north side side doors, which is the side door that faces towards the houses or Gary, Indiana. Um, we, no, we normally never use those doors, so it might be foreign to people when they go out that way, but it's just like the south side of the church, same concept. Um, when you're going to be dismissed orderly from your pews, and we have about four or five X's so that we can get some type of flow 
Um, and just keep in mind that church as a whole is going to be a little bit longer. Communion is going to be a little bit longer because we're not going to be able to dismiss as many people at the same time as we normally do. So we're always going to keep uh, six feet. The X's are at least six feet apart. I think I measured them about eight to ten feet just to play it safe um, because not everybody's going to sit right on the X. Um, so, or stand. Um, and um, so that's the way we're going to do it. When you get to the Soleil, where I'm standing right now, there's going to be hand sanitizer. If you've watched our live stream the last two times, you notice there's hand sanitizer there. Um, you're going to hand sanitize your hands. There are two X's, two X's on the Soleil, which the, the first X closest to the Iconostasio is um, where you're going to be taking Holy Communion. The fathers are not going to be exactly in the middle. They're going to be, uh, it looks, I think it's about 10 feet apart. One's going to be standing by the uh, icon of Christ, and one's going to be standing by the icon of Anaya. And um, people on the south side of the church are going to get communion from the priest on the south side or by Panaya and exit out the south side doors. People on the, seated on the north side of the church are going to get communion by the um, icon of Christ and exit the north side doors. Um, when you come up to receive Holy Communion, that is the only time where you should be removing your mask uh, for obvious reasons. Um, we ask that you do not touch the, uh, the cloth, the communion cloth. The altar boys will be doing that. So there's no need for you to touch anything. Um, and then we ask, as normal, um, open up your mouth wide and receive Holy Communion. Then you can put your mask back on and uh, follow the direction of the parish council to exit the church. There will be no andideron, there will be no koliva, there will be no kissing of the priest's hands. All those are uh, strictly forbidden by the rules of the metropolis. Um, so for the most part, um, that is pretty much it. Um, when you exit the doors, that is um, where we'll have the, the donation basket. We will not be passing the tray um, like we normally do when Father is giving the sermon. Um, so we ask that for any donations for that day or stewardship envelopes, you please place them in the basket that will be uh, located uh, at each exit on the north side and the south side. Once you exit the church, we ask that you proceed immediately to your vehicles and do not congregate at the exits or anywhere on the church grounds. Um, we ask, or if you do, stay at least 68 feet apart from everybody and do not be anywhere near the doors uh, when you exit so other people can exit and go to their vehicles. There will be no coffee hours. There will be no Sunday school at this time. Um, and that's pretty much it. So this will complete the first segment. These are all the basic rules, uh, regulations, and protocols that have been given to us by the Metropolis of Chicago, by His Eminence Metropolitan Nathaniel. And also, uh, we're trying to stay, obviously, within the guidelines of the CDC and our local state and county and city governments. So I'm going to end this segment, and we're going to make some other videos um, for each station so that we can see some reenactments. It's kind of like when you go on an airplane, and before you guys, uh, before the airplane taxis, the stewardesses uh, play the video or give you a reenactment to let you know exactly uh, what's going to happen or what needs to happen. So thank you for your time and your patience. Um, this is the new normal for now. Hopefully it's a temporary normal um, until this pandemic uh, is officially behind us. So God bless and uh, take care.